Hello everyone, my name is Eloi Durand. I'm a PhD student at the University of Montpellier in France. I studied biology, converted to bioinformatics, then visualization, and today I'm going to talk about what I've been working on for the past few years, pangenomes. There are complex entities that are hard to represent and visualize, so I wanted to give you a look at trails through the pangenome visualization jungle, ancient ones and new ones. Let's start with some definitions, since many of you may not be familiar with pangenomes yet. What is a pangenome? Well, the simplest definition would be that a pangenome is an inventory of genomic material within a group of related individuals. However, this is a bit too simple. The word first appeared in 2005 in a study by Tetlin et al. on eight bacteria strains. They found out that some genes were absent from some of the strains. A pangenome was defined as the combination of a core genome and an indispensable genome. The core genome being all the genes that were present in every strain, while the dispensable genome was constituted of genes absent in at least one of them. The categories evolved with the studies, for example with the addition of the shell genome or the apparition of accessory as an alternative to dispensable. This definition works well for bacteria but is not really adapted to eukaryotes as they have much more non-genic content. Years after the first definition, a new one appeared focused on sequences and their succession rather than genes. This definition aims to capture all known variations of genomes from a group, in particular structural variations. A common representation of such pangenomes are graphs, where the nodes are sequenced chunks and the edges represent their succession within the genomes. Here is an example. Let's say that these four columns are genomes. Each of them has sequence chunks that might be shared between them all. These chunks, when identified, can be added in a graph as nodes. Then, the succession of the chunks within the first genome allows us to link the green node to the blue node, and then the blue node to the red node. Considering the second genome will add the link from the white node to the green node, and then the last two will create branches for the violet and the orange chunks. Within such a graph, a gene could be a node, but it also could be included within a node, or spread out on multiple nodes instead. The notion of pangenome therefore shifted from a gene-based definition towards a sequence-based one, but both still coexist nowadays. This duality of definitions makes the representation and visualization of pangenomes even more difficult, as there is no clear standard for what a pangenome file should be, and it comes with a variety of representation. Gene pangenomes are widely considered as sets of elements, therefore often represented as Venn diagrams. One of the drawbacks of this representation is that it does not scale well with augmenting number of genomes or sets as all intersections possible are hard to display. Upset plots are alternative representations that display counts for every type of set intersection, as in a bar plot. They scale better, but are not fit for pangenomes with tens or hundreds of genomes, as the number of possible intersections grows exponentially. Moreover, such unspecialized representations do not consider biological information that could be of use for the visualization of pangenomes, starting with gene notation. Dedicated tools were developed for the visualization of gene pangenomes like Pantetris, Panvis, or Panex. They represent pangenomes as either a collapsible presence absence matrix, a circus like set of genes divided into core and other categories, or a multi view interface with multiple sequence alignments and phylogenies. Some other tools display position genes either on biological coordinates, that's what page APX does, or a pangenomic reference of sorts, as in Panacea and its bacterial panchromosome. However, these visualizations are all based on gene pangenomes without the intergenic space. Finally, there are tools and representations focused on structure pangenomes. We could cite Genome Ring, showing genome paths and circular coordinates, and recently graph-like representations, for instance the sequence tube map as included in MOMIG. These representations suffer from a lack of readability when a lot of genomes, and therefore paths, 
should be displayed, ending in what we call the hairball effect. To facilitate the exploration and interactivity while putting the highlights on the pan genome rather than its individual genomes, we tried the approach of linearity, creating PANASH in the process. PANASH stands for Pan Genome Analyzer with Chromosomal Exploration and displays pan genome in a browser-like fashion. The representation takes pangenomic blocks from the genomes and displays them along a linear axis following pangenomic coordinates, ending in a positioned presence-absence matrix. This representation is brought to life within Panache as a web interface created with JavaScript, bits of the D3 library and the framework Vue.js for easier development. The weighted input is a pangenomic data file in tab-separated format. The first columns give information of position on the pangenomic coordinate system, while the last columns contain the presence absence status of the pangenomic blocks within each genome. Once loaded, these files can be explored within the interface. Panache offers a miniature of the current pan chromosome with navigation options. When loaded, a GFF track of gene annotations can be displayed as bee swarms plot just on top of the presence absence matrix. This matrix is completed on the main view with tracks displaying summary data for each block, for instance the core or accessory status for each. A panel on the left provides options for exploration like changing the pan chromosome on display, choosing the threshold that should be applied to categorize a block as part of the core genome, a zoom option for hard to read regions, and others. Panache is available on GitHub with further documentation and demo versions and is still undergoing development efforts. In its current state, Panache is one more step towards visualization of pan genomes, but still lacks features, especially regarding structural variations. I wish to further develop its representations to offer a more comprehensive tool. Moreover, we wish to optimize it to provide a better user experience by enhancing the responsiveness. One way would be to use WebGL technologies for the drawing instead of SVGs. To this end, I'm really interested in recent visualization grammars like GenomeSpy and Gosling that could allow a better implementation. Needless to say, I'm going to listen to the next talk with great attention. With this, I'd like to thank all the people who helped me so far and thank you for your attention. I will now welcome any questions.